Numerical Computation, Chapter 8, Video 1. We now study the method of least squares. This is a kind of an optimization problem. That is, we try to approximate something by minimizing the arrows, so in the best possible sense. Here's the problem description. We are given a data set, as um, shown here, and x0, x1, x2, all the way to xm, so m plus one point with the corresponding y value. And with this data set, we want to fit in a function y equals to f of x, where there are some parameters in this function. And we want to adjust the parameters such that the arrow, which is the distance between the function you try to fit in and the y data, is minimized. Note that this is not an interpolation problem. The function you fit in does not exactly interpolate the data. Take now, for example, the simplest case, which is a linear regression. We will take this simple example first and go through some basic derivation. Now say we have a data set and we want to fit in a straight line. That is the function y of x equal to ax plus b. So apparently the data set you have does not lie on a straight line and you want to fit a straight line through them such that arrow at every point and all the arrows measured in some way becomes as small as possible by adjusting the two parameters a and b, meaning the parameters that determines the line. So in another word, the problem is now the following. I want to find suitable parameters a and b such that when we use the function y equals to ax plus b, the arrow becomes smallest possible. Let's now talk about how to measure the arrow. We know we have m plus 1 data points, and every data point contributes to an arrow. So in the end, we kind of have a vector. So we are familiar with how to measure the size of a vector earlier by using three different vector norms. Say, for example, you can use the L infinity vector norm, that is, go through every point and measure the arrow and take the absolute value and then take the maximum of all those arrows. And that corresponds to the L infinity norm. Also, you can do the L1 norm, that is, the measure at every point, take absolute value, and I just add them all up. That gives me an idea of how big the arrow is. Now, both of these are totally fine ways of measuring the arrow. The problem with these choices lies in the fact that afterwards, the mathematical problem, the optimization problem, with these two choices become nonlinear and really, really nasty. Therefore, we will use the last choice, that is the L2 norm. So, we can measure the arrow like the L2 norm, and just to get rid of the square root, because I don't need it, because if this sum is minimized, so will be the square root. It's an equivalent statement. So we can say we want the arrow to be the arrow at every data point squared, and I sum them all up. Okay, so And then I want this sum here to be as small as possible. And therefore, the method carries the name least square method. Okay, now we have the following minimization problem. Find the parameter a and b such that the arrow function psi of ab defined as following, summing over all grid points, and the, the square of the arrow is minimized. Okay, how do we find these parameters a and b then? We know that when the function psi reaches its minimum, at the minimum, the partial derivatives with respect to a and b, the first partial derivatives, 
they must be both zero. This is something we learned from um, multivariable calculus. We also know that in order to make sure that this actually does become a minimum, in principle, you have to do a second derivative test. The good news with this problem setting is if you choose the arrow to be the sum of all the squares, then it is guaranteed that the point you find here will be the minimum. You can go ahead and try to verify that, but that is guaranteed. Okay, let's look at some details. So here I list the arrow function again, and we want to compute its partial derivatives with respect to A and with respect to B. So how do you differentiate this expression with respect to A? Well, you would think that A is the variable here and everything else, they're just constants. So I have a finite sum. I could differentiate each term and then sum them up. So if I differentiate this term with respect to A, the chain rule says I have 2 times this thing here, multiplied by the thing in the bracket, differentiated in A, treating everything else as constant, which means the B and the YK does not contribute anything because it becomes 0. When you differentiate the first term in A, what you get is the coefficient in front of A, which is XK. So once we have understood that, the partial derivative with respect to b is done in a totally similar way. So we will differentiate each term and add up. And for each term, the chain rule says I have 2 times the whole thing. And then what's inside here, I need to differentiate in b, which gives me 1. Okay, so we have these two equations, a and b. Looking at them, we realize that both of them are actually linear equations of A and B. And we would like to rewrite it so we can find what is the coefficient in front of A and B and so on. Okay, And the final answer will be obtained by solving the equation 1 and 2 for A and B. So let's rewrite it as a system. So we see that the first term here, first we see we can get rid of the 2. It doesn't really matter because you set it to be 0, 2 will be gone. Okay, and then look at the first term here. I see that after I distribute x in, I have a x k square, and summing over all k, and a has nothing to do with k. And therefore, the coefficient in front of a is just the sum over x k square over all k's. Now let's look at this term here. It would be b times x k, summing all over k, and again, B has nothing to do with K, so we can take the B out. So B stands out, and I have the sum over all XKs. And the last term, XK times YK, has nothing to do with A and B, which are our unknowns. So these are like the data. So we move it to the right-hand side. I'll be summing over XK, YK, 4K from 0 to M. Okay, so that's how this first equation can be rewritten. And the second one here is done in a completely similar way. So summing over each and take out A and B because they're common factor. So the first one gives me summing over all XKs in front of A. And the second one gives me summing over B, but M plus 1 times. So B will be multiplied by M plus 1. And then move the sum of YK to the right-hand side. We now see that we get a 2 by 2 linear system to solve for two unknowns A and B. And uh, once the data set is given, once the xk and yks are given, what's in front of A and B are just the sum of this xk and yk in a specific way. So some terminology. So these equations are called the normal equations for this least squares method problem. Let's take an example and see how this least squares being worked out. So let's say I have a data set for um, an experiment done on some liquid with different temperature, and I measured the surface tension. Okay, So the temperature is T, 
and surface tension is S. And uh, for different temperature, I measured different um, surface tension. So scan through the data, I noticed that as temperature increases, the surface tension seemed to decrease a bit. So from some physical law, we know that there is a linear relation between them. So S will equal to some A times T plus some B. So we want to use the least square method to find the best choice for these two parameters, A and B. Okay, so um, we actually derived what to do here how to set up the normal equations. So we know that in the normal equations, we need to compute all the sums. So let's prepare ourselves. Ready? And compute all the sums. The sum of all the tk square is done here, and I get this number. Sum it over all tk, I get this number. And I also know I need to sum over tk times sk, which I get is that number. And summing over all sk, which I get is this number. Then I can just put these numbers into the corresponding position in the normal equations here, the sum of tk, sum of tk squared, sum of t, sum of t, and that's m plus 1, which is 8, sum of tk sk, sum of sk. So I can easily send this, say, this system into MATLAB and ask MATLAB to solve it, or I can solve it by hand. It's only 2 by 2, not too bad. Solving it, I get two numbers. So for the A, it's a small negative number, and for the B, I get about 6.7 or 67.9. Okay, so let's take a look at these two values and see do they make sense. What is the meaning of A here? We see A will be the slope of the line if we plot the data set out. So we see that as T increases, um, S decreases. So we are expecting the slope to be negative. And also, the decrease is not that strong. So it shall be a small negative number, as we get in A. So the line is almost horizontal. And what will be its intercept at 0? Well, it should be some number pretty close to that number, 68. And you see we get it. So this is a way for you to control your answer. So you're expecting these values, and if you don't get it, then go back and double check. Maybe you did something wrong. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.